QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021, customized shortcuts and homepage icons. Let's get into it with Intuos, QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars company file. We currently have the homepage open. You can open the homepage by going to the company dropdown, selecting homepage. We also have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view dropdown, selecting open windows list, and seeing whether or not you have this little icon, this little carrot collapsed to open the home page or the open windows then we have the in prior presentations we've been taking a look at the flow chart on the vendor section customer section and then we took a look at what quickbooks sees as important icons important functions that they placed in the company area and the banking area we also took a look at this item to the left where we have our open windows and focused in on uh, what is included in the shortcuts shortcuts being a, a faster way to get to certain things so, and we looked at what QuickBooks sees as important enough to put in the shortcuts. We saw a lot of duplicate information uh, within the shortcuts, the homepage. And then, of course, we can find this information in the normal kind of way, which is going to be the drop down function as well. So, now you might think, well, how can I customize some of these areas? So, we can make some changes to the home page. And I think this shortcut area, if you use the shortcuts, could be useful to basically make some customizations over here in the shortcuts and you might want to view the shortcuts then up top in the top bar if you use those shortcut items so we'll talk about that now the home page uh, will be because you can customize the home page and you might have a home page that looks a little bit different but the home page will generally be customized based on how you set up the company file when you start the company file whether for example you sell inventory or you do not sell inventory will, fact, will factor in as to whether you will have some of these icons up top and the flow up top or simply the second icon down below. Whether you have payroll on or off will, will determine whether or not you have these items down below. So once you have set up your company settings pr correctly and chose the industry, QuickBooks little flow chart is pretty good. And again, it's really just something to visually help you. So I still, I still use the flow chart, but you really don't need it after, after a while because all these icons will be on the drop down. You can find them in, a, in another location as well. So usually, in other words, the default is good uh, after you've done the company setup, but just let's take a look at some changes and how, that, how you can adjust that if you so choose. If we go to the edit drop down and go to preferences down here, once again, we're gonna go through a lot of the preferences when we when we set up the company file because that's where you spend the most time in the preferences. But just to think about this with regards to changes to the home page, if you go to the desktop view up top and you're on the My Preferences tab, then uh, you can then uh, choose whether or not to show the home page. So if you click this off, it's not gonna show uh, the home page when opening the company file. So if you start to open the company file and you no longer need the home page, you, f you feel like you have everything elsewhere, like in your shortcuts over here or, or in the top icon bar and, uh, and in the drop downs, and you no longer need the, the home page, then you can turn it off so it doesn't turn on every time that you open the company file. I, I still like having it there. <laughs> so in any case, if you go to the company preferences over here, then you can, you can make some changes to what icons will be uh, shown down here in the section so select features that you want to show on the home page in the customer section if i want to remove like the sales receipts for example let's say that uh, we don't use this process we we all we always use the full inventory receive payment over here we don't make any sales at the cash register in other words and you just don't want to see that icon you don't want to mix anybody up possibly you have someone else working on this thing and you don't want them to mix it up you could say okay let's remove the sales receipts and say okay and QuickBooks will close everything up to change the home page. And then I'm going to go to the company drop down and open the home page again. And now the the sales receipt now has been removed from the home page. You could still get to the sales receipt, it just won't be on the home page uh, to do so. And that might be useful again if you don't use the home page, you don't want someone mix, mixing up the invoice and the sales receipt, possibly. If we go to the edit drop down preferences, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna turn, and you may not want to actually click on these because uh, I'm going to turn them back on, hopefully be to the same spot when I get back here to, to, to the finish stuff, this presentation. So statements and statement changes. So again, you can remove the statement and statement changes icon here. Now, if you want to remove anything down below, you got to turn the feature on or off. So if, for example, I don't want this estimate icon over here within my flow, on the, then I can say, okay, I don't, I don't do estimates. I'm going to go over to the estimates and say, yeah, save the change there. QuickBooks must also 
uh, all open window. Okay, closed all the open windows again. So then if I go to the estimates, it says, do you create estimates? If I say no and okay, and then open my company files and say home page, make this large. Uh, now the estimate thing is gone. So if I don't have a job cost system, I just use the inventories. That's my starting point. I don't need that icon. You can turn that icon off by turning the function off. Edit. I'm going down to preferences again. We're going to go to uh, the, the jobs and estimates. I'm going to turn it back on now. So I'm going to say yes, turn that back on. I'm going to go back up to the desktop view, save the change, and then it's going to close all the windows. Uh, then uh, the sales tax. So if you don't have sales tax, you can turn off the sales tax inventory uh, and payroll. If you don't have payroll, you can turn it off and time tracking. You can turn that off. Now, inventory is one of the main ones that by default might not be on. So if you don't sell inventory or you don't track the inventory through the system, uh, you could say that you, you don't have inventory, say, OK. And then if I go back to the to home, open this back up. Now that whole track up here related to inventory is now gone. Yeah, it's a very simplified vendor section now. I'm going to go back to the edit view preferences. I'm going to turn the inventory back on now by going to the desktop view. Uh, and then I'm going to go back to the inventory here, which is now off. I'm going to turn it back on and say OK and OK. And then go back to the home page. And there's the inventory's back. So you can customize this out a little bit. Again, we'll, we'll talk more about that in the preferences when we start the new company file. But like, as you can see, once you set the preferences in accordance with what you need with regards to inventory and whatnot, this is pretty standardized uh, homepage as, as with regard to the flow charts here. If we go to the shortcuts, now we're on the shortcut items on the left side. Remember that you might want the shortcuts up top. And I think people that I've seen that use shortcuts a lot uh, like it up there because you can put it on the top icon. And then it doesn't take up much space up top. But then if you if you have it up here, you only want the ones that you really use up top uh, in that case. So so you might want to edit these. So I'm going to put it back to the left where I'm used to seeing it. View drop down. I'm going to put it back to the left. And then I want to go ahead and uh, edit these items. So I'm going to go to view. I'm going to customize the icon bar. So I'm going to customize the icon bar. And then you get a screen that looks like this. This lines up to what's in your, your customized items down here. So home page on down, you can then add or remove items here. And you can also change the ordering by just dragging them. So if I want my company up top, and I think that might be the best, I could put it up top by dragging. Now the home page to me doesn't add much because I can get to the home page by going to the company drop down and going to the home page. But maybe that's hard to remember, you know, but that's right at the drop down. So I feel like that's not saving much time to have the home page. So I would I would delete the home page there. Uh, income tracker again doesn't add a lot for me. So I would delete the income tracker. The bill tracker doesn't do much. The calendar might be a, a useful might be a useful item for me. So I'll, maybe I'll have the calendar. Uh, I'm going to remove the space. This the snapshot. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really do much for me. I'm going to delete the snapshot customers. I wouldn't have it in there because you can get to the customers by going from here to the home page or in the customer drop down. It's the first one up top. So I don't feel like that adds much. So I would get rid of the customers, the vendors, same thing. It's the first one under the drop down for vendors or it's here. So there's two ways that are pretty easy to get there. So I wouldn't go there. Employees, same thing right here, or it's the first thing under the employees drop down. So it doesn't add much to me. Uh, I'm going to remove the space. Bank feeds might be useful if you use the bank feeds. But again, the bank feeds are pretty easy to get to under the drop down here. They might not be the first thing under the bank feeds. So if you use bank feeds and not a lot, then you might want the bank feeds there. Documents as well. If you use the documents as, as a lot, then you might be useful to have the documents there to me, I would think. Reports seems repetitive to me because reports centers the first thing under the reports section. So I don't see that as adding much value in my opinion. Space doesn't need it. Order checks. If I order checks, that might be useful, but they're trying to sell me checks right there. And I don't really like having advertisements on my thing. So I usually remove that. Payroll, same thing. I mean, if I have set up payroll, I'll, I can set up payroll, but I don't need the advertisement in my shortcut bar. Credit cards, pretty much the same. Services, pretty much the same. User license, pretty much the same. <laughs> Space, and then feedback. Again, if I want to give QuickBooks feedback, you know, I don't really need their feedback thing in my shortcut bar. So I would remove most of those uh, items 
there and that'll clean up your shortcut bar a lot and then if you were to go to the to the lists and see it up top uh, if I go to view um, and say I want to see the top icon bar then it's a lot cleaner so I, I could say okay these are things that I actually you know go to enough and I think they're they're you know not so repetitive that I might actually use them in the icon bar so I'm going to go back to the view drop down and see it on the left hand view once again and let's go back to the uh, customize area now you could also basically add you know change the editing or what this icon will look like you can see the little icons over here so like the my company you might want to change the icon if so you can go to edit here and you can edit these icons so you can you got the you know list of the icons that they can they can look like so you, you know you can go to one of these icons on the left and uh and see if you th if you think an icon looks nicer than the one they have there so i'm gonna say i'm gonna close this out say okay if you want to add things back you can go to the add button here so add and then you can look through the list um, add users to your license uh th these items uh backup backup uh backup data so if i wanted to basically add that one i could say okay add the backup data maybe i want to pull that down to the bottom all right maybe i want that down here or maybe i want that second backing up might be fairly important that might be one i use and then add so batch transaction bill tracker uh calculator credit cards uh create the invoice so some of the functions that you actually use uh, you might you might do it here instead of having it on the home page so some of the major flows that you go through uh, you might add in this way like invoices and bills and so forth so you, you can go through these icons and if anything that you're using that basically takes you a little bit longer just what, whatever you're, you're going into possibly i would think i'm going to close this out the things that are at, like the bottom of the drop down list where you got to go to two drop down lists possibly reports that are down here they're like at the bottom of the drop down or something or budgeting type of report that you don't remember going down uh down to, to this side like a transaction detail report although again the reports you can put in to uh the to the favorite reports here so if it's a report you want to add then then you want to put them into the favorite reports which we looked at customizing before so you can customize the reports and you can put your favorite reports in there we've got the profit and loss and the balance sheet so any other kind of function that that you think maybe is kind of buried in here that you that you go to uh, or just can't remember where it's at because it's it you know you got to go into another drop down to get there then maybe that would be worthwhile to put into your uh your shortcut items so if you go into something and you want to add it say you want to add the pay bills here you can also do it this way instead of finding it in that list you can go into the pay bills and you can go view and then add pay bills to the icon bar and then that'll add it and then you can choose an icon that you want it to be for the pay bills icon and then say okay and so that adds it to the icon bar so uh one of the ones like, like you might want to add something like uh, the register you know to get to the register we got we had to go a couple steps you can get to the check register go go into the reports drop down i'm sorry banking and use register or you can go to lists and go to chart of accounts and then go into the check register so it takes a couple steps so you might want to add that you know that might be something that's on the home page but you might want to add it here going to view add the check register and then you know put an icon on it i won't spend a lot of time putting the icon on but the check register might be something that you, you could want and then you can go directly there if i close this back out you can go directly to the check register uh invoices if you make or journal entries if you make journal entries like adjusting entries might be something because it's kind of buried like if you go to the company drop down uh, you got to go down to journal entries here so it's kind of at the bottom so if you're someone that you know enters journal entries a lot because you do adjusting entries or something like that then you might want that on your custom bar so if i open up the journal entries if i could find it then i can add it to the bar then i can go okay view and then add to my bar on the left and then again i'm not going to spend a lot of time with the icon but you know an icon and there we have there we have that now if i was to to view that basically up top on my bar up top i would go to view and top bar and so now i got some stuff up here that might be uh, more useful to me to, to kind of drill down on so so again all those stuff that's kind of repetitive notice quickbooks put like this customer center it's a really important area but it's but it's you, there's a ton of different ways you can get into the customer center it's the top item 
So you might want to look at those ones that you use from time to time, but are kind of buried in where you find them. You have a problem finding them, <laughs> and, and, but you use them from, you know, fairly often. Maybe those are the items that I would, I would think about putting in the bar up top. Also just note that when you do do that, however, like I used to spend a lot of time customizing things like this and my shortcuts in Excel and whatnot. Uh, but the problem is when when you use someone else or you try to show someone else what you're doing, uh, they don't have your they don't have your custom bar, and and so it's hard to it's hard to work with somebody else on it. So I actually I try to to kind of learn the the general way to get there in QuickBooks, like using the drop down, and practice that as well. Simply because a lot of the job oftentimes is communicating to a supervisor or employee or a customer how to do something, and if they don't have the same shortcuts that you have and you're completely dependent on the shortcuts then uh it becomes difficult to communicate so i actually limit limit the shortcuts that i use um but again if you're using it all uh, this process all the time then the shortcuts if they save you time then then use the shortcuts so i'm going to say view and then i'm going to put this on the on the side again so i'm going to say view and left so there we have that all right also, just a quick note there, like if you use the open windows like I use all the time, I use this open windows on the left. If you, if you want the shortcuts on the top and you still want the open windows, you can do that. You can go to view and you can put the shortcuts at the top. Uh, so now I got the shortcuts up here and now I have my open windows. So you can still open your open windows by going to the view drop down and the open windows list. And so now you kind of have the best of both worlds. You got your open windows uh, on the left that you could be scrolling through if I if I open up my general ledger uh, then I have my two open windows that I can kind of toggle back and forth between still and I've and I've got my shortcuts up top if you if you are utilizing the shortcut so that might be a good uh, a good option it could get a little bit more crowded because you're taking up space here and here so you're, you're you're limiting the space in the middle where your data input would be but but probably a good option if you have a decent sized monitor. I'm gonna go back to the standard setup though. We're gonna be sticking with uh, this setup and I'm usually not gonna be working with the shortcuts. I'm gonna be working simply with the open windows open as we work through the practice problems.